and welcome back today we are going to be reviewing some of your content again if you want to send it in you can go to my discord channel look for a tab on the top called content review and you can post your clips in there i'd rather see you lose i'd rather see you die if you start sending me clips in of you winning dogfights that you should win like dogfighting people in a key 84 when they are flying a p47m don't bother coming in it's not thunder show we are here trying to learn first of all thank you to all my patrons you guys have been sticking around for quite a while now and i really can't thank you guys enough and if you are looking to buy anything from the guys in store I have a three percent discount link still no decal yet should be then one to two weeks it will depend on gaijin but they are saying one to two three weeks even when all they have to do is add the decal to the game looking pretty good but of course, I am kind of curious on what you guys' reaction will be. So we are in the key 43. A little bit of a stereotypical Japanese fighter. Very light, very nimble. Not very fast. And not the best gun. So you are going to be relying on your turn rate. Your turning abilities in general. As well as your stall speed. And you are going to dive in there. Try to get something done on the furball. Which is understandable. But then you react to the BF109. Which is, of course, the right thing to do. You don't want to start committing to people down low. Go way too slow. And then get boom and zoomed even lower into that furball. When you already are not particularly quick. It is a beer for the 9. Not entirely sure what version it is going to be. I'm going to guess a beer for the 9 E. But it could also very well be a beer for the 9 F1. The E is probably going to be the more annoying plane to fight in this thing. It is an E. Is it going to be an E1? Yes, it is. And you can tell... Yeah, there he goes. He's instantly going to break off. And he's going to convert everything back into altitude. So you do not want to keep pushing head on with him. Because he is simply just going to run away. I recommend trying to get him on your 6. And maybe start trying to reverse him. But we will see what you will do in a moment's time. That BF-9, I can instantly tell, is extremely passive. I get it. You don't want to turn fight with the Japanese prop. Especially in your German prop. But waiting till 4 kilometers when he's giving you his 6... Uh, it's a little bit too passive for my liking. And that's already going to set a little bit of a tone for this fight. I will probably try to get this guy on my 6. And I wouldn't really try to turn for the head on. I'd rather get some speed and use it against him. Because right now I'm burning speed or you are burning speed. And this guy has been kind of diving on us this entire time. So you go head on. You are going to bait him into the head on this time. But you keep throttling down, something you don't want to do. You are much more maneuverable and this guy will instantly break off. Now here, he's a lot faster than you. And you are probably going to full send it. He will stay out of your gun range. You are going way too slow. He's probably going about 450, maybe 500 even because he was slightly diving. But if you look here, he breaks off quite late. This guy is very susceptible to a fight. Because right now, the second you start turning in and he, he notices that he's a losing lead on you, he breaks off. You want to use this against him. You want to dance in front of him. Not too much that you get too damaged because right now this thing is pretty fragile. You could have been set on fire already. Which is of course, well, not very ideal. So you're going to send it after him. This guy is going much, much quicker than you. You are cutting him off. He's higher than you. And look at the rate he is gaining on you. He's going to do a horizontal turn. You're only going 220. Keep that in mind. You do have a very low stall speed. But you are going to need some speed to actually get the shot off. And I noticed that you like to throttle drop a lot. You're probably also trying to cool your engine off. But you want to be fast in this thing. You don't need to be slower than the guy behind you. When your plane is this much more maneuverable. You want to have the speed to actually kill him. After he overshoots. Or maybe after he breaks off. If he makes a mistake and you don't have the energy to kill him. You basically give him the kill. Key 43 is a little bit bullshit. So you might get away with it. But still, bad habit to learn yourself. So he's going to go into a little bit of a spiral. You're going way too slow. You're going 190. This guy is going to go even more vertical because he has all the speed to do so. You are probably going to send it after him. I recommend to go horizontal here. Yeah. Just go horizontal for a little bit. Pick up some speed. And then you can just pitch up into him. Because right now you are basically getting yourself killed. Because you're trying to stay inside of a turning circle. You don't need to. You just pick up some speed. Keep whapping please. And just stay outside of his guns. That's all you have to do. Right now. Because you continue to go horizontal below him. He is going up. He will just fall on top of you. And now you're going about 300 when he gets a shot. Oh, look at that, almost perfect. Turn when you get the shot, you're still not whapping. You're still trying to go as slow as humanly possible. It is going to get you killed. 
try to keep your energy high. If you do that, you might actually get this guy killed. You're already slower than him. He's already catching you. Why are you not whapping? Keep your energy high and can actually make him overshoot. He's shooting at you. You're doing the right thing. You're trying to stay in front. He's sort of dropping again. You're trying to stay outside of his guns. You're trying to get a reversal in. But doing it like this, you are going to be too slow to capitalize on it. Right now, you probably could have been going like 400, maybe 420. And you would, would have very easily just sent it right after him. You would have been looking at maybe 400 meter range. You would have been gaining on him a lot more. You would have been faster, had more nose authority. And now you're just kind of flying in place. This Spitfire is probably going to kill him. I don't know how quick he is. He might actually not have enough energy. At least, especially at this altitude, actually. Yeah, Spitfire is not going to be fast enough. And again, you're just kind of hanging below him. Uh, look at it. So you're flying straight here. And this guy is continuously turning onto you. As you can tell right here. Let's go back a little bit. He is turning up. You are basically stalling out. You're just staying in place. You're way too slow. And this guy will eventually just drop on you. Now, if you had pitch up there, you might have been able to stay outside of his guns. Force a Spitfire to turn with it. Maybe done something. But now you're going to get him on your 6 again. And he's going to start shooting you at about 300 kilometers an hour. Look at that. Almost perfect yet again. He's going to pull lead on you. You're way too slow. You can't get out of his guns. But you keep getting hit. And this guy is much less maneuverable. It's still a beer for 9 It's pretty damn agile. But it's definitely not a key 43. He dives out. He's going to go to the airfield like everyone does these days. And you switch on over to the next beer for 9 and I can tell what you're trying to do here. You're going to try to dive on him as he's going for your teammate. But right now, you did it a little bit too quick. I think that's what you're doing anyway. You want to fly away for a little bit. See if he commits to it. And then when he does, instantly cut him off. Right now, you're presenting yourself yet again. You're trying to reverse him. I get it. B for the 9 E4. Is it more or less dangerous? I think less dangerous. Because he actually only has two of the machine guns. And... With the 20 millimeters, he's not very likely to hit you. Throttle dropping yet again. Trying to stay in front of him. He is going to break off. This should be a kill. Well, it depends on the guns and if he actually pays attention. But then again, this thing doesn't have a rudder. Actually kind of annoying to get shots on. B49 turns around. You do the right thing. You switch targets. This guy doesn't want to take the head on. You turn after him. You should probably be able to get the kill right here. He has a little bit of damage. He's just flying straight. And now he doesn't have the speed to get away from you. Keep in mind, I see those tracers behind you. You're probably getting shot. Yep, there he is. Can you get out of his guns? Man, you are taking some damage this game. Here comes another guy. You're right to stick on the BF-9 E4. Almost fly through his guns yet again. Be a little bit more aware of that. So, and again, you stop whapping. You're not overheating. You do not need to... You just want to have as much energy as possible. Right here. Just pull that way. Roll 90 degrees to the right. And just pull up over his nose. And can fold in right behind him. This. With a little bit of desync. You would have been dead. I mean I think that's. He even has an angle. He just kind of missed. This is very risky. You have the more agile plane. Try to stay outside of the people's noses. You don't have a reason to. Of course, with a plane like this, you are very slow. The key 43 is a little bit harder to play than something like the A6M2, A6M3. But these are very costly mistakes that will bite you in the ass with basically any plane that you fly that's more maneuverable. Use your energy. If you outturn someone and you have energy, you will eventually kill them. If you keep dropping your throttle to kill them quickly to try and reverse them, they end up just flying away. And you get no kill at all. At this point you are very heavily damaged. Heavily damaged, sorry. And really, this this is kind this kind of stuff shouldn't happen. I fly through his guns. And now all you have to do is just keep turning after him. And you should be able to get the kill in. Here we go. You actually do get so. Keep eyes on that P63. And I see another guy here. I'm not sure which one it is. You should be able to get the kill. Oh, that, that's lucky. Holy shit. But you start turning in. Oh yeah, that's the P63. And then for you come again. I mean at this point. Not much you can do anymore. All the mistakes that you made compiled into being in this position. This position is unwinnable. I'm not going to tell you do this, this or this. You're too slow. You're too low. These planes are too fast. And they have too many 50 cals. And there is people all around you. You can see them all. Okay this is a bad dodge. 
You kind of pull inside of his guns. He just crashes on his own. Tuna can, Conoys. Amazing. I mean, this is unwinnable. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This is absolutely unwinnable. But if it was only the P63, going up here is the bad call. Because you are just gonna lose too much speed. Just pull under him. Just pull to the right. Don't go up. You're losing. Look at by the time you're in his nose, you're going 300. Anyone is going to hit this. Do not try to not do that. Just use your 400 kilometers an hour to roll a little bit to the right. Go like again, 90 degree, pull under his nose. And then just like a P51, that's going to end up eating shit right below us. There we go. There's Tuna Can who just rams a tree. Just for no <laughs> for no fucking reason. Pretty hilarious. But this this entire fight is unwinnable. And it kind of compiled itself because you kept going lower when you didn't need to. This is a pretty hard fight. I don't think you could have won this in the long run. But we want to look at the small things that might help you out in the long run. When it's actually 1v1, maybe a 2v1. But when your teammate is gone here, there's three guys coming in. Well, you have one teammate, he's damaged. You have a 109E, E4. You have a, a P63, you have an F4U coming in from behind. You have a 190 coming in from the runway. You have a, a P51D coming in, or P51 coming in from the runway. That's just too much shit around. You probably wouldn't have won this game. So I'm not trying to tell you that you would have been able to carry this with this plane, with these guns, with this amount of enemies. Very unlikely. But that's the things I noticed. And I hope it will help you out. Let's look at another one. We have the F5C. Against the J35A. And this is a pretty nasty fight. It's pretty damn annoying. There is no sound. That's fantastic. Is there actually no sound? No, there is no sound. Well, you'll have to do it with me smacking my lips. And me swallowing my spit every two seconds. I'm sorry for that. And the J35A is a problem for you. Which is understandable. Some things to keep in mind. The J35 has absolutely abysmal energy retention. It is not very good at getting its nose exactly where you want it to be. So you want to abuse these two things. It doesn't have good missiles. And the guns on it are rather slow. Together with the bad, well it's not really bad nose authority. The awkward nose authority. What is going to end up happening is he's very much not likely to kill you if you keep your speed high. And the F5C is pretty good at keeping its speed high. Whereas the J35 is not. You want to keep this thing at about Mach 0.9. Why is that? Because the F5C is... Well, they, it keeps its speed pretty well at high speed. You don't really want to make it go to lower speeds. Now, this guy is instantly going to cut inside of you. Because it's a J35. But you are faster than him. Look at this. He is cutting you off. He's turning with you. And you are outrunning him despite you turning into him. Which is a good indication of having more energy. Just be careful. Because at low speed... This thing is nasty. And you have the right idea here. You also have way more speed than him. And try to go up and energy trap him. He's already slinging off his missiles. Which indicates to me that this guy has absolutely no clue what he's doing. Because that is never going to hit. He might be able to... I know he might be thinking about losing some weight. But that's not the reason most people shoot their missiles off. So he doesn't follow. And you are going to try to loop up and over. Which is understandable. You might not want to use your flaps here. Because you're not going to be getting the shot anyway. You are simply losing speed for no reason. So what do you want to do? He is essentially going uh, very low stall speed. I don't know how fast he's going. At these speeds it's very hard to tell. But you are faster than him. You have more energy than him. And you don't want to use your flaps here. He will turn in fight of you anyway. Just use your energy. And by using your flaps here, you are killing a lot of your potential. He is going to be able to pitch up here. And you are not going to be getting the shot. And no, I haven't seen the clip yet. This is me going off from what I see. I try to get these uh, recordings in, in a single take. That's why you might hear me do some weird stuff. Why I stutter, I mess up a word or whatever. Because I'm trying to keep this as genuine as possible. I don't want to go hindsight as 2020. Because anyone can do that. So now, I mean, you somewhat have him by the balls. Because you are going much faster. But without the flaps. You would have been in the same position. Except you would have been going much much quicker. So try try that. Nice transition by the way. When did you actually do that? I did it here. Nice transition. Barely noticed it. Maybe because I was looking at something else. But again. You, now you could have gone straight up. 
he is not going to be catching you. Try to keep this guy as low and slow as possible. Well, low isn't really going to be a thing because you are, are at like 8,000 meters. But you have him right here. You have him slow. You have him where you want him. You basically did the right thing until... Well, you overuse the flaps a little bit and you did burn a lot of speed for no reason. So now you are letting him get his energy back, which is something you do not want him to do. You want to keep it fast. You want to keep him turning. It is not too soon or too late. Because of the small mistakes that you made at the start and the delay, if you hadn't used your flaps as much and just gone straight back up when you were in this position, you would have very easily done it. This guy would not have gotten the shot on you. If you go straight up here, you might stall out right above him. You have flares. He doesn't have the guns to kill you from range. So you probably could have just sat above him. You would have stalled out. And then you are able to just spray all your 560 rounds at him. So. Too late. Use last flaps. Here. Maybe use them. But now you, you allow this guy to regain his energy. And now he's starting to gain on you. You don't want to be in this kind of position. Keep turning. Keep this guy as slow as possible. This now is looking very bad. You are going very slow. He is going to be catching you. And you're doing the right thing. You dive a little bit to pick up some speed. The issue is. He is now. Very close. The speed difference isn't massive. And you are going to have to try and reverse him. And if he. Tries to stick on your six. You are dead. This is the kind of position. You're done. You don't want to be at this in this position. He is going to be gaining on you. You just want to run it. You just want to book it to the deck. You want to keep this guy fast. And then either suddenly all in. And try to reverse him. But you want to stay on his wingtip. And you want to start rolling around him. At this point. Harrier coming in also. But he will catch you. You are not going to be trying to outrun him. It is not going to happen. Yeah, there we go. He goes back and he's going to start catching you in about 2 to 3 seconds. Is he? Uh, I guess not. Not yet. He will start catching you in a minute though. Because he's going much, much quicker here. So here you just want to go horizontal. Keep yourself at very high speed. And just keep turning in one direction. Do not attempt this. Do not attempt a slow reversal. It is not going to work out for you. You can do two things. And I've done it in my F5C video. It's in the in the intro. Keep it fast. Keep him occupied. Keep him thinking that you're trying to run. And then you can suddenly all in. If he reacts to it properly. Yes. You die. But once you get a J25 this closely on you. I mean it's kind of good night. It's, there's not much you can do there. And now. I mean. I'm not sure what you're trying to do. Are you trying to outrun him? Or are you trying to out, out turn and reverse him? Because you're doing two things at once here. And because of that. Let's look at it right here. So you're trying to bleed him of energy. But yourself you're going way too quick. You're trying to stay as fast as possible yourself. But then you go vertical. Both these things at once are not going to work. This guy will always stay on your six if you do a maneuver like this there is no getting away from him anymore now you're too slow and now you are going to die so you do make some pretty hefty mistakes the main one though i mean this is a little bit sloppy but you get the right idea just use your flaps a little bit less maybe you just combat don't you try to use your landing too much you want to play energy you're not gonna out turn him until you have him by the balls you don't want to use your your flaps too much you would have been a little bit quicker here. And you probably would have done the right thing here. Because you have the right idea. You just do it a little bit too late. You could have just committed to this. No chance you would have gone on the shot. If you hadn't used your flaps as much. So that's the main thing. And then here. Either try to reverse him. Or try to stay fast. And keep him at arm's length behind you. Do not try to outrun someone. And then go straight vertical. You need to do either or. You're doing both things at once here. And it's. It kind of got you killed. I mean the J25. I'm not going to say it's an easy fight. It is going to take some experience. It's going to take a lot of know-how. And just more experience. It's it's a tough fight. I'm not going to say it isn't. But I think you definitely could have won. In the position you are in. On to the next one. Nice nice Yoda picture actually. So. I get Messerschmitt on. Messerschmitt on. Nice pun. 
you are in the P39N. All right. First issue, P39N. Absolutely busted ass play. Two things, however. Above three to four kilometers, performance not that amazing. B of on a nine, if this is an E, you do not. And I repeat, do not want to dogfight it even when you are on the deck. You might have good performance, you might have an amazing turn rate, amazing energy retention, amazing flaps. The B of a nine E stalls too late and you cannot really use your ability to out energy him because he's just gonna hover behind you like a helicopter and he will eventually spray you down so let's look at what kind of one and nine it is it's an e so you already kind of don't want to dogfight him and is if if it's an e4 it's an e3 basically the same thing the guns don't hit as hard it's probably the best one in terms of if they get guns on you but you don't want to dogfight this you really do not buy the chipmunk 720 so first thing you try and Okay, so you have the right idea. The P-39 versus almost every plane in this game that you can face, you can do exactly this if you are at the appropriate altitude. Versus the 109E? Nope. At 5 kilometers? Nope. So, double whammy right here. You are gonna kind of set yourself up for disaster. Now, maybe you were a little bit quicker in the head-on. And it looks like you have him stalled out here, but this guy will not stall out. And here... You're already giving him the shot. You do not want to do this. Pull inside of him. Because right here you give him the shot. He didn't react to it. He is definitely flying with a controller. And you can abuse that. But look at that. He instantly stabilizes. And here. I mean you have a little bit more energy. And you have the right idea. You can do this when you are lower. Because he is misplaying it. So you are. Okay so let's put it this way. Because the BF9 E3 is playing it wrong. You are doing the right thing. So you are reacting to him properly. The issue is. He has a lot of cards in his hand. And he can make a lot of mistakes in a fight like this. Going underneath him. I don't recommend it. Because then he can pick up speed again. And you don't want him to do that. Go horizontal. Very hard to see where he is going. Next time please use your the two key. So it follows where you are looking. Wait, Are you? I don't know. But. In this kind of fight, he is just going to get position on you. This is all about knowing your plane. And this is probably one of the worst fights you could have taken in the way you are taking it. However, because this fly, this guy flies it so damn terribly, you are getting position. You're not overusing your flaps too much, but I'm not sure how much you are actually using and how much the replay system is showing you. You're not getting the shot. Don't try to get it. You are just going to sacrifice position. And if you do that, he is probably going to get right on your ass right here man it's hard to follow where he is there he is he is now on your six and he is gonna start pulling some lead on you because he just turns much better and you don't want to go to like 300 kilometers an hour you want to bring this as low as possible he could have shot you there again but he just didn't react to you going down which is fine but i want you to notice how poorly i would i wish he had sent it in i wish that by his chip bunk here would have sent it in to be honest because you are kind of reacting to him properly. You're making some mistakes. But they're all not too detrimental. Again, he can pitch into that. But he's not reacting to you. He could have been looking at you... Uh, about here. And he probably would have sprayed you down. That stall could have been aimed right here. And you would have exploded. But he didn't do that. You are still reacting to him. And if you go up right here... I don't know what his E3 is doing. It's kind of hard to... This is hard. For me, that is. Because <laughs> he is playing it so terribly that you are doing the right thing, kind of. So you're not really doing anything particularly wrong. There are some small things that I mentioned. And this is a fight that you shouldn't be winning anyway. But I want you to notice how many times he turns the wrong way. He makes a mistake. And looking at this title, he's probably going to end up killing you regardless. So you are doing the right thing here, trying to stay above him. You're trying to keep your energy state. But again, you are not going to be getting this shot. So. And again, he's just instantly going to get behind you. You're turning into him kind of, but he doesn't have a shot. So it's okay. And again, you go back into these, these scissors. Well, I get it. It looks like you're winning them. 
Because he is just flying them so terribly. Look how long he keeps flying straight before he turns around. Look at that. Instead of turning around instantly, he's flying straight for like 100 to 200 meters. And then he starts turning around. Look at this. He's still flying into the other direction. Still flying into... Now he starts rolling. Now he's flying straight and only now he starts pulling in. And this entire time you're already pulling into him. So this guy... I mean definitely flying on the controller. He almost got the shot because his line selection is so terrible. And every time you finally get him on your screen... Is when he finally starts pulling into you. So that's why it took so long. This fight wouldn't have taken very long from his angle. From his point of view. If he actually had maybe a keyboard plugged in. But here... Here's where the stall speed comes in. So this is what I meant at the start. Now he's just going to be able to pitch up straight into you. First hit comes in. And you're going to go up. And you're going to pull into his guns again. Luckily he doesn't have a raw key bound. And now... I mean he doesn't have the energy for this. So that's fair play to you. But you were a little bit too late. And now you're going to stall the wrong way. Yep, there you go. If that guy had kept pulling this entire time. But again, he's just flying away. I don't know what this guy is doing. He's just flying away from you. And then once he sacrificed all his position, he starts coming back. This guy gives you a reset basically every time you make a pass. Look at that. Flying straight, flying straight. And then he starts pulling in. Way too late. This guy can full send it to you. He doesn't have to play it so passively. He's not flying a worse plane. All he has to do is just commit. Okay, now you rip your flap off. Now it really is done deal. But... Mm, yeah, I don't know. You kind of did the right thing. With the cards you have been dealt. But at that point... Okay, this here, here's, here's the, the real kicker. Here's probably going to be your biggest mistake. I mean, apart from ripping the flap off. In the P29N... You need the flaps, they are your lifeline. Amazing playing, but in a dogfight, the flaps are just insanely good. You want those on your plane. But that goes for almost every plane, so that's a bit of generalized uh, advice. This guy, and you're going for 730, 7, 470, sorry. Don't start pulling back up, because if he misses this shot, and he might... Now the, the stall speed comes in. And he already has all the position in the world. It doesn't matter what you do. At this point you are done. You juke the shot. And just pull straight up into him. And he's going to miss again. But look at this. Because he has so much lower stall speed. He can just hang behind you. And even though he doesn't get the shot right here. And you stall yourself out. And you're trying to use your energy. He doesn't stall. You can't use your energy when he doesn't stall. And he's flying this horribly. And he's still giving you this hard of a time. He can just sit behind you. He's just a helicopter. It's like dogfighting uh, a Harrier in your Milan. It's very frustrating. So this is the kind of fight that you don't really want to take. You want to treat the beer from an E like a Spitfire. And look at this. That, uh, he just outturns you without an issue. I mean this is probably server desync as well as the, the replay system. But this is not ideal. You really don't want this. You don't want to allow this. The real way to do this. First of all you want to bring this guy lower. Because the P to the end at low altitude. Is bonkers. Keep that in mind. It is fast as shit. It turns well. It has good as shit climb rate. Just keep it below 2 to 3 kilometers. And you are going to extract all that performance. And this kind of altitude against the 109E. Not going to happen. But I want you to. If someone is going to do this with these. Uh. When they send in a clip like this. Please keep an eye on your enemy. It's very hard for me to commentate on what he's doing. Because I can't actually see what he is doing. But look how long it takes him for, for him to turn around. In general. You have the right idea to fly the P to the 9 n However at this altitude. Versus a plane like this. Not the best idea. This guy flew it absolutely atrociously bad. I'm sorry Bias Chimbunk if you see this. But this, is, this ain't it. This just ain't it. So, there you have it. If you have any questions, especially for the guys that have sent these clips in, feel free to ask them down below. I try to be as objective as possible, but I get it. Sometimes when you are in the fight, it feels like you are doing the right thing. And in this case, the P-39, it's a fight you shouldn't have taken. Not in this, this kind of setting anyway. But with the way he was flying, you probably did the best you could have done. He was throwing it quite substantially. And when the enemy player 
plays it wrong, you don't necessarily have to play it right anymore, if that makes any sense. So given the circumstances, you probably didn't know how the 1 and 9 stacks up versus the P29, which is perfectly understandable. The P39 basically counters everything that doesn't have a bullshit low style speed. The P and the 1 and 9 E is essentially a Spitfire. So be careful of that. Other than that, not horrible. Just keep it in mind. And this is just a matter of knowing your planes, I think. I think you had the right idea. You just didn't really know the matchup versus the E3 in, well, specifically. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for sending it in. And I will see you all in the next one.